Uh, we thank our, our participants and our speakers, uh, and we will uh, have five entertaining sessions again today with some great speakers. Uh, so we look forward to that. And without further ado, if uh, um, Janesh Gopani and Ashwin uh, Patni are uh, online, then I can pass it over to them. Uh, just a, by word of introduction, uh, Axis Mutual Fund, Axis Asset Management Company is uh, India Avenue's uh, newest advisor that we've added uh, to the other two advisors that uh, advisors on our portfolio. Um, and Janesh is the portfolio manager for Axis and for our mandate. Uh, and uh, uh, himself and Ashwin will provide uh, some of the background of Axis, uh, the process of Axis, uh, how they identify company using their style and why they think that style will uh, continue to dominate in India. So if Ashwin and Janesh are there, uh, I will pass it over to you. I'll just make Yeah, hi, 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 Mugundan, uh, Janesh here. Hi, Janesh. I think Ashwin is waiting on the, uh, for you to just uh, allow him for the call. Yeah, I've, I've authorized him, so I'm not sure why. Uh, I think he must be having trouble getting in because He's he, he he was just uh, requesting me on WhatsApp that can you just tell them to uh, let let me in so okay because uh, I've I've clicked uh, numerous times to admit him so I'm not sure why it's not going through Perhaps, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll keep trying to admit. He's trying to log in again. Yeah. Okay. You want to wait for two minutes or uh, we can start? <clears throat> I think we can start and then Ashwin can uh, join as I'll make sure that uh, as soon as he comes in again that I admit him. Sure. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, very uh, good afternoon friends good morning friends uh, uh, wherever you are i uh, hope you guys are uh, safe and sound uh, and clearly uh, we have seen how this epidemic or the pandemic has taken the entire globe under its uh, nose so uh, so, so uh, mukundan uh, uh, you want me to just start with access and then get into markets or yeah, perhaps uh, just a quick uh, introduction to Axis and uh, their existence in India, and then uh, uh, your style and uh, philosophy, and then your outlook for markets. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so, guys, uh, uh, Axis uh, uh, Asset Management Company is a 11-year 11-year-old enterprise uh, started by uh, one of the one of the uh, largest private sector banks of India Axis Bank, they own 75% stake in our company. And uh, we started in 2009. In 2012, we had a, a JV with Schroders of UK, uh, which now owns 25% uh, in Axis Asset Management. Uh, so now it is a JV between 75, uh, 25 uh, partnership between Axis Bank and Schroders. Uh, we started uh, as a 43rd mutual fund in India, and now we are among top 10. Uh, so it's been a great uh, journey uh, in terms of asset management. Uh, also, uh, some of our uh, products have really been outlier uh, in last 10 years uh, when we when we uh, came into the market, uh, and 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 that has really helped us to gain. 
a significant uh, i would say brand recognition uh, as a axis group as a axis amc uh, among various uh, uh, trade partners channel partners uh, so it's been a great journey uh, now we would be sitting on close to 8 billion dollars of equity aum and total uh, uh, aum of around 14 billion dollars uh, so uh, that and equity both uh uh so zero to and 43rd mutual fund to come to top 10 i think it's been an incredible journey for us it's kind of a case study in india uh, how uh, an amc uh, uh, can can really uh, grow uh, with with certain philosophies and principles despite uh, this market being a more commoditized market so clearly axis uh, amc uh, since incorporation has done uh, something uh, uh, always tried to do something uh, new in terms of the product uh, innovation and so we have got lot of accolades and awards uh, for uh, product innovation across the uh, basket to be debt or hybrids or even equity funds and uh, that is where india stand uh, india uh, we stand in india uh, uh, among among down some of the top uh, 10 players on the equity side uh, pure equity we are now almost number 5 number 4 pure equity and uh, the it, we are at the striking distance of uh, number 2 and number 1 player so again uh, not boasting about ourselves uh, just to give you a flavor that uh, how uh, how how we have been able to uh, grow our aums along with our performance along with our innovation on the product category and uh, that is where we stand so it's been a incredible journey for uh, axis group axis amc and we are one of the uh, 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 decent value uh, creators for axis bank as a parent uh, shroders they came in 2012 uh i think ashwin is uh uh ashwin has joined ashwin can you hear me one second let me find ashwin you are on mute let me unmute him one second Ashwin yeah. Uh, yeah yeah Ashwin I just gave a brief introduction uh, uh that we are 15 uh, 14 15 billion dollar enterprise now in terms of AUM uh, so I have given a brief of access uh, you can just uh, add your uh, stuff Ashwin can't hear you Ashwin can't hear you please unmute yourself sorry guys uh, perhaps dinesh uh, i mean whilst uh, ashwin uh, comes back you could talk us through uh, the quality style and and why as a amc you've chosen that star yeah yeah so uh, uh mukundan i will just uh, touch upon that philosophy uh, so as i was just continuing that as we started the organization uh, we were 43rd mutual fund and clearly we needed to come out with something uh, differential in terms of uh, ideation and and philosophy uh, to stand out in the market uh, uh, otherwise being a commoditized market so clearly uh, uh, me my uh, my uh, boss uh, my other colleagues uh, we all come from a, a long term uh, background long term investment approach and hence uh, uh, we thought that why not uh, come out with a very tight philosophy of a uh, 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 long term wealth creation 
and uh, which was uh, in in some sense missing in India, and uh, and 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 so so some of the uh, critical parameters which we uh, 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 started as a process uh, as a motherhood uh, uh, philosophy was on uh, corporate governance was on strong management uh, backing the strong management with a longer term view identifying scalable sectors identifying growth as a philosophy and also looking into financials uh, in terms of high ROEs and high free cash flows. So these are some of the, uh, I would say, differentiated attributes what we try to bring in into the portfolios. Uh, 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 unfortunately, in India, uh, uh, many of the AMCs have not been able to come out with a very distinct uh, philosophy and principles. And uh, to some extent, we have seen them uh, losing the ground uh, with the investors. Uh, so clearly, this tight philosophy has really helped us to uh, really uh, project ourselves as a long-term wealth creators. And uh, last 11 years have really uh, been fantastic uh, 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 on, uh, going through this philosophy, identifying uh, a very good quality, high quality companies uh, who can deliver uh, uh, much, much better returns as compared to industry averages mm -hmm. in any given business cycles. Obviously, there will be ups and downs in the portfolios depending on the business cycles. Uh, but we have seen, uh, uh, if you take any three, five year uh, uh, horizon of any businesses and in the portfolio, uh, clearly we uh, uh, stood out as a, uh, a decent player in the market. So clearly this philosophy of buying into quality stocks and obviously quality is a subjective word. So we have to do our uh, due diligence uh, in terms of what quality means. So for us, it is uh, purely how the corporate governance of the company is, uh, uh, is done and how the management has uh, rewarded its shareholders uh, in, in different uh, ways. Uh, so these are the very two standout, uh, I would say, metrics where we really uh, try to do a lot of uh, research and try to understand uh, and try to filter the uh, universe as best as possible so that you weed out as many companies uh, which doesn't fit this criteria. And uh, really this has helped us to uh, have a very tight uh, universe of 200 to 280 stocks uh, categorized into A, B, and C, uh, and and this is across the market cap. So A would be more of a AAA companies in the large cap space. B uh, would be more of the uh, good companies in the mid cap and the larger mid cap space, and C would be more of the companies where uh, there could be a good turnaround uh, story in making uh, ta uh, taking into account all these parameters. So clearly, this this philosophy has helped us for the last 11 years and uh, we don't see any reason changing this philosophy and we really feel that uh, as corporate governance, as ESG metrics become more and more uh, stringent uh, for the uh, from across the world, uh, we see very well placed uh, to identify some of the names or already we have uh, good names in our portfolio to deliver risk adjusted return to the portfolio. Ashwin, you would like to add something? Ashwin, you are not audible. Ashwin? No voice, no voice, Ashwin, no voice. No volume, Ashwin. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah. So Shiva, you want to uh, take any uh, further questions on how, uh, what kind of product and everything? Yeah. So if you could uh, talk us through uh, the, the the mandate uh, that design, and uh, I'll you know give a little bit of heads up. So uh, Axis is running a high conviction version of their portfolio for India Avenue, and the focus is very much on long term. Uh, quality as a style. So perhaps if you could uh, outline your style through some of the companies that you invest in, 
uh, and give the logic behind that that would help our audience. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, our 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 strategy is to identify uh, leaderships uh, positions across large cap, mid cap, and small cap basket in that in that sector. So if I if I may just take an uh, 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 example of financial as a sector, clearly uh, uh, there are uh, very good standout names like Kotak Bank, uh, HDFC Bank. Uh, and they, they and they have been uh, really up to the uh, uh, I would say our, uh, matching our criteria of corporate governance, uh, strong management pedigree, and have been able to deliver a higher than averages credit growth rates with uh, least NPA problems and delivering uh, 19 to 20 percent ROE, uh, whereas the average industry ROE would be anywhere around 9 to 10 percent. Uh, clearly, uh, some of these enterprises uh, have delivered uh, uh, obnoxious returns, I would say, for last 10, 15 years. And still, given the space where they are, which I said, scalable sector, uh, the opportunity is humongous. Uh, so let me give you just uh, 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 some uh, facts of this sector. Uh, still, uh, 50 to 60 percent of the assets and the liabilities resides with uh, public sector banks, public sector uh, entities, and uh, this uh, and 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 HDFC Bank and Kotak Bank total together would be close to seven eight percent market share in 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 the overall credit and liability space. Uh, as India grows, uh, obviously the near term issues would be around because of this pandemic issue. But on an average, for next 10 years, if India grows at uh, six to seven percent uh, uh, on on the real GDP terms. Uh, clearly, uh, there is a great opportunity for some of these enterprises, given their uh, mm -hmm. low market shares uh, in India, to uh, continue to deliver two x or three x of industry credit growth rates uh, for a, for a very very long periods of time. Uh, given a very low penetration levels of uh, uh, retail uh, lending in India, it, 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 it is a big opportunity for some of these enterprise as they penetrate more and more into uh, rural India as well as uh, semi-urban uh, towns. So clearly, uh, uh, we have seen these companies for last 15-20 years, how they have delivered uh, with best uh, corporate governance uh, practices and we don't see any reason why they cannot deliver having uh, all, all, uh, all, all things are in place, be it technology, uh, be it strong management pedigree, be it ability to penetrate uh, 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 various uh, product cycles, and also ability to manage the NPA cycles well, uh, despite uh, what we have seen in some of the other uh, uh, public sector banks where uh, there has been a huge issues around uh, not only asset quality, but also corporate governance. So uh, we really feel that these are some of the strong enterprises uh, which can deliver uh, very uh, high uh, industry average returns uh, for the shareholders or for the investors for a longer period of time. Similarly, uh, uh, consumption, India is a domestic consumption driven economy uh, and hence uh, consumption also plays a very, very significant role uh, in terms of uh, creating wealth for the investors. Some of the companies what we have uh, uh, across our uh, universe uh, have have been one of the strong uh, pedigrees like Nestle's of the world, PD Lights of the world, uh, and, and they are leaders in their space. Uh, what we have seen in India is uh, if a company is has a leadership position uh, at the ground uh, clearly and uh, there is a strong management who understands the innovation game well. I think those companies uh, can survive uh, uh, competitions. Those companies have ability to deliver high free cash flows uh, uh, in, in different business cycle. And that is what we have seen every now and then. Uh, uh, wherever there are uh, uh, leadership positions, be it technology sector, be it consumption sector, be it uh, the financial sector, uh, those companies have delivered humongous returns to the uh, investors. 
so i think uh, uh, in if we see india as a, a very differently there is no need to go down uh, the curve of uh, quality to make returns i think uh, if you have a 3 to 5 year view and if you take risk adjusted return uh, as a metric then clearly some of these strong companies large companies large mid caps and even some of the great innovative small caps can deliver uh, uh, outsized returns to the investors and hence as as uh, mukundan rightly said that we run a very tight uh, uh, portfolio uh, we don't like to have a long tail which many of the other amcs tend to have uh, because that distorts our a research a process that distorts my analyst view on the company and if there is no skin in the game uh, and if you are not a large shareholder in any company uh, you lose uh, uh, in terms of the uh, uh, returns as well outsized returns as well obviously we go wrong in our sometimes we go wrong in our assessment of the company and wherever we go wrong we have we then don't shy away from taking out from the portfolio uh and did, and then we don't wait so obviously we would have also gone wrong in some of the infrastructure companies in some of the quick service restaurant uh, type models uh where we would have thought that uh, this companies could uh, make significant difference uh, but unfortunately the strategies change management could not deliver and also some corporate governance issues came in came in in, in between so obviously we make mistakes but uh, our our simple philosophy is if 60 65% of the portfolio is a strong portfolio then i think uh, uh, one or two mistakes here and there can uh, the portfolio can absorb those losses and that is what we have seen as a uh, in in our 11 years of journey and clearly uh, we feel as uh, uh, as across the world and even in india uh, as the efficiency kicks in as the transparency kicks in uh, i think more and more uh, uh, money will flow to the uh, efficient enterprise uh, tax paying enterprise uh, corporate governance enterprise and that is where uh, we feel we we uh, stack up well uh, given our uh, philosophy and given our quality aspect Dinesh, a question that com uh, commonly comes to us, and I'm sure commonly comes to you as well, is that uh, India, from a PE perspective, looks expensive. And uh, I'm sure when you look through your uh, list of stocks, you'll find uh, some quite high PEs. Um, what's your thought on, you know, how an investor should look at valuations in India? Yeah, I think it's a great question. We keep that uh, we we get those question every time. We have got those question for last seven eight years. <laughs> uh, but I think uh, one thing we need to understand: India is not China. There are not many plethora of companies available to play where there is where everything fits in. Be it corporate governance, be it ability, a strong management, uh, be it the sector in itself. So clearly, uh, to be very frank. Uh, uh if in a sector if i need to if i want to find four good four or five good uh companies uh barring one sector which is consumption sector it is very very difficult to find so what happens that uh, anyone who is investing in india uh, uh would not want to put money in some of the companies where there has been a corporate governance issues or uh, where the where the uh, the managements have not been in a position to deliver for various reasons and hence the and, and as i said we are not like uh, china where you have so many uh, companies to play in one sector uh, unfortunately india is very very bottom up stock specific destination uh, don't look at india from a top down approach uh, obviously the tendency to go wrong is very high uh, but on the bottom up side a uh, few companies who have ability uh, uh, to uh, to deliver uh, a growth uh, takes disproportionate profit pool of that sector and with as i said with with again new digitization uh, innovation uh, the efficiency uh, the corporate governance uh, i think more and more uh, what we are seeing is the larger is becoming larger and larger day by day uh, it is killing the competition uh, uh at least we are that is what we are seeing in india so clearly 
uh, evaluations are important, uh, but I think if uh, investors can look through a uh, sort of a five to 10 year kind of an horizon, then to pay a near term higher valuation uh, uh, shouldn't be an issue. But if an investor is looking at a 12 month kind of an horizon, then obviously things will look expensive. So I think uh, India, you have to look given its ability to generate six, seven percent real GDP numbers for a longer period of time. If we double our GDP uh, as uh, 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 the government uh, is dreaming about in next five, seven years, then clearly uh, some of these enterprises will still continue to grow at 10, 15 percent or maybe 2x, 3x of GDP for a very, very long periods of time. As your per capita incomes are low, uh, you have you have uh, 1.3 billion population. Uh, you have a young population. As they consume more, as the per capita income increases, the demand for some of these uh, products, the demand for some of the brands will just uh, shoot up uh, once you cross a hurdle. Uh, let's say around 2,500 or 2,700 dollars. And that is, I think, uh, uh, also we have seen in China. Uh, as I said, unfortunately, in India, we don't have plethora of companies, good companies to play around. And hence, uh, always you will find uh, some of the companies trading at a, at a, a higher valuation uh, because of some of the trades what they have uh, developed over the last many years. Yeah. Um, yesterday, we heard from two companies uh, on this tour, which was InfoEdge and Astral Polytechnic, both companies which you have selected. Um, could you, I mean, they gave their uh, synopsis of the business, but could you give us the other side of, of the analysis as to why you really like those companies? So, uh, 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 InfoEdge, uh, a very, very uh, simple thought process. Uh, again, first, the management is very good. Uh, despite being in this private equity space kind of a structure, uh, they have not gone all out uh, putting their money across all kind of uh, business models. So they know their limitations very well. Uh, he, uh, Mr. Sanjeev Bigchandani, uh, who is the CEO or MD, is very well regarded in the in the Indian private equity space. Uh, our thought process was very simple in India, as I said. Uh, the new age uh, innovation, unfortunately, it is very difficult to play on the listed space. And uh, the only company which we can, we could play uh, from a uh, listing a listed perspective was InfoEdge. They have some remarkable investments made into uh, uh, online delivery space and online insurance space, and also many of the other uh, businesses where they have invested. Uh, they have a very strong franchise of, of their own, uh, which is Nokri.com, uh, which is more creating jobs uh, uh, platform. Uh, they have 99 acres, which is a real estate platform. And they have uh, uh, Jeevansathi.com, which is a, a, a sort of a matchmaking platform. Uh, and, and that companies are delivering, uh, uh, at least I know the near term numbers will be bad because of this pandemic. But uh, the cash flow uh, delivery by, by the three platforms have been very, very good. The Nokri, dot, Nokri has been their uh, baby, I would say, delivering uh, close to $100 million of cash flows every year. Uh, and those money, they are investing to set up more, more platform. Uh, the good part is he knows his limitations very well. So he doesn't want to go overboard uh, investing across uh, new age uh, business models. Uh, they have that defined space of classifieds and that is where they feel uh, that there could be a huge uh, revenue uh, transition from uh, offline print to online print and that is where they have been uh, doing very well. Uh, they have large investment in one of the companies which is Zomato which is like a online uh, uh, quick uh, delivery uh, business. And obviously, uh, now you have Alibaba's of the world also putting money in that franchise. So clearly, I think for us was to participate in some of the new age business models. And as we uh, really see what's happening in the world, uh, these are the business models which are taking uh, existing business models by surprise. 
uh, and that is where uh, some of the mid cap and the small cap listed companies are fal faltering because they are not investing in technology so so our limit a limited point is company is good management is good they have delivered over last 10 15 years and they have created a very strong franchise of some of the investable universe and why not participate uh, in that company and uh, and and take part in that uh, new age uh, innovative business models so, and, so uh, this is about info edge sorry uh, about astral poly clearly again uh, management uh, we had done a lot of research uh, on the management before participating uh, i am sure you would have had a call with mr sandeep engineer who is the uh, managing director of the company a very very straightforward guy understands again his opportunities very well and limitations very well uh, have been have have done remarkably well by bringing uh, CPVC, which is one of the segment they are into into pipe business. Uh, first into India, we're tying up with Lubrizol, which is one of the biggest uh, producer of that resin in the world. So clearly, they started with a very quality uh, 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 product model, and uh, from that they have now gone into adhesive. Uh, they went and bought one of the company Resinova, and uh, they have a very strong uh, brand in India, Bond Tight. Uh, so clearly, a company uh, is in the right sector. Uh, there is a huge demand for housing. There is a huge demand in agriculture for this pipes and fittings business where they are into. Again, their adhesive uh, is sort of a complementary and supplementary to them. So I think uh, uh, slowly but steadily they have created a very strong business model they have very strong name in the market uh, some of the leaders in the space uh, in the pipe business uh, supreme industries uh, have uh, given us very good reviews about these uh, companies on the market on the ground we have seen very good uh, 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 positive views from the trade channel partners and clearly now uh, now this company is one of the three organized player in india where organized business is just 40 percent if i'm correct and uh, 60 percent is still remains unorganized space so again the space is good management is good company has delivered good growth rates uh, in past uh, five ten years of existence and is delivering even uh, during this times of this market again opportunity is big management is good high high roe game uh, and if, if, if really India has a lot of potentials on the housing side, on the agriculture side, uh, pipe is a very, very, a very, very uh, uh, important, uh, uh, I would say, product basket, uh, which, which anyone would buy, would want to buy and will buy uh, once they are constructing the houses or when they are laying out the entire irrigation uh, system in their farm. So clearly, uh, we like the management, we like their approach. Uh, uh, a good thing is they have not uh, done any shortcuts to for their business models and they have lived up to their strategy at least now and in both of the companies Mukundan we are one of the largest shareholder in the domestic MF space um, you know I guess one of the uh, questions for a quality investor is when do you sell um, because uh, obviously quality businesses tend to remain quality businesses unless something changes in the business model or there's a different direction. So at what point and how important is selling in your process? Sure. Uh, so first thing is on this quality curve, uh, let's take, uh, we go wrong in the assessment of the business model strategy and the management. Uh, as I said, we also tend to make some mistakes. So if we go grossly wrong in either of these three pointers, management might be good, but the sector not be good. Uh, management might be good, but the business uh, cycle itself is in a very, very bad uh, situation. So uh, you know, three aspects where we, we think that our, the management, ha we have gone wrong in the understanding of the management itself or we have gone wrong in the understanding of the assessment of the business model itself and the strategy what management is adopting if we find that management is digressing from its uh, uh, old strategy and trying to do shortcuts 
clearly uh, we just sell out uh, at one go whatever is possible so this is the first point in uh, selling out uh, from the portfolio ideally i would say uh, uh, we would like to trim uh, uh, those stocks from our portfolio but never sell if you if you go right uh, in the assessment of the business model in the assessment of the business uh, strategy and in assessment of the management clearly mukundan we have seen uh, uh, churning the portfolio for the heck of churning for a short term uh, valuation purpose has not helped uh, in india uh, clearly uh, once you exit the stock it becomes extremely difficult to again uh, venture into at a higher levels because that is a that is a normal psychology that i want to buy at a lower levels than from where i have sold up uh, let me again give you case of kotak bank and we have been investor for last 11, 11 years since the time of inception of our uh, uh, portfolios and also uh, uh, we have I, i know this management for since 2006 uh, when uh, when uh, first time i was i got introduced to their uh, executive directors and the md uh, mukundan they have delivered 35 to 40% cagr uh in the good times and in the means on an average on a cagr basis so why you want to exit those stories for just near term valuation obviously we need to trim down in our portfolio and that will definitely we do uh, uh if we feel that uh, the two year numbers are uh, looking obnoxiously high in terms of valuations do we do would really trim down from the portfolio but uh, if you really ask me would i want to exit just for the near term uh, valuation purpose uh, uh, such a great enterprise i, I would say uh, no so i would exit only we go wrong in the assessment of the business model uh, or the strategy or the management but if we really feel that that company can deliver those 20 25% uh, cagrs for a longer period of time obviously the near term might be Uh, looking bad for various other reasons either we would like to add more when those stocks goes down like how they have gone down now or uh, we would like to trim uh, if the stock is uh, uh, at a fair value as per my analyst with 12 to 15 month uh, target price what they have to set in uh, as as their krs so we would like to trim in our portfolio we would but we would not like to exit if the opportunity is large okay um and uh, yeah, just two more questions so the next one is now that we've seen covid and we've experienced covid at least the beginnings of it uh where do you think i mean what is the landscape for you uh for the next 3 to 5 years what will bring success uh, in terms of investing so i think uh, first is uh, uh simple investing we should not uh, complicate ourselves <laughs> in terms of too many uh, sectors too many stories to play in the portfolio i think clearly from here on uh, what we are understanding is the companies uh, with that have strong balance sheet uh, a strong management uh, ability to take tough decisions in this uh, difficult times uh, and survive uh, the business model for next 6 month will come out a disproportionate winner over the next 2 to 3 years time so any sector you take there, there is the distortion dislocations of the business models which are happening uh, because of this pandemic uh, but obviously there will be winners and losers in each sector and companies who are able to uh, have a strong balance sheet at play companies who have strong management uh, uh, a team to execute uh, uh during uh, difficult times companies uh, who take right decisions obviously i would say even the toughest or toughest of the toughest company managements might end up making wrong decisions even the pandemic and the uncertainty what we are uh, going through uh, so i think our job is just to find those uh, 30 uh, uh, 25 30 companies uh, where uh, the survival is the strong instinct for the near term and then look for growth and uh, market share gains uh, once uh, once uh, once a normalcy returns so clearly this is not the time to play high beta high risk strategy uh, uh, 
uh, the, this is the time i would say to play a cautious approach uh, but obviously not go uh, too conservative uh, uh, as well because obviously you don't know whether the recovery will be a u shape recovery v shape recovery l shape recovery i don't know so these are unprecedented times difficult times uh, ma many of the managements also uh, are grappling with this new uh, uh, issues and hence uh, it would be uh, it would be i would say sane to just look through each and every company talk to each and every managements as much granularly as possible to understand uh, uh, what they are doing to survive and then look for growth over next 2 to 3 years time thanks sir this one uh, one more question which is a little uh, different access launched uh, an esg fund uh, a little earlier this year or late last year and obviously in countries like australia and new zealand esg is playing a bigger role in investing um uh, can you describe Axis's thoughts on ESG? Is corporate India embracing ESG and do you think it will make an impact going forward? Yeah, so clearly uh, as we are seeing uh, as many of the stakeholders, so be it large FII investors, be it some of the investors like us have started asking questions to the management uh, on those grounds. Uh, also, uh, the other stakeholders, uh, the regulators, uh, uh, the customers, the employees itself are now uh, changing the uh, game uh, uh, by asking some tough, tough questions to the management. Clearly, uh, we are seeing uh, as more and more uh, queries arise, management has started to think through uh, on, on ESG parameters very, very seriously, I would say. Uh, uh, in India, like Asia, G was always uh, prominent. Uh, so, so there is no ambiguity on G part, which is governance part. And we have seen that the companies who have not been, not lived up to their expectation on the governance have destroyed uh, shareholder wealth uh, disproportionately. Take the case of Yes Bank, uh, a very classic large cap company, an uh, index company. Uh, destroying uh, shareholder wealth uh, disproportionately and there are many examples and last four or five years uh, with the new regime uh, who is more focused on this clearly uh, we have seen governance uh, playing a very vital role for the uh, for the investors uh, likewise uh, e and s is also an emerging concept i would not say everyone is embracing on that but at least uh, some of the uh, uh, some of the great, uh, great enterprises, some of the good managements uh, have realized this uh, and not only large caps but also some of the mid caps and small caps. Uh, uh, they are also learning, they are also trying to understand uh, the best practices, what they can follow uh, and, and really uh, uh, many of the large sovereign funds, many of these uh, endowment funds have uh, really ask them very, very, this is what we understand, has, are asking them very, very tough questions. And if they want those investors to participate uh, uh, in their story, clearly they will have to change that game on ESG front. So clearly many, many companies have started talking about it. Uh, uh, we are also seeing uh, uh, companies asking us, some of these small and mid-sized companies asking us uh, uh, to help them out if uh, in, 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 some form or the other in terms of how to improve the uh, ESG, uh, E and S, a part of the of the business model. So, so I think uh, like uh, how you are seeing in the global world, we are seeing even in India. Uh, however, uh, you have to give some time uh, to the companies on the E and S front, but G, uh, I'm sure, is becoming more and more important. Uh, the, the way auditors are being questioned, uh, the way the way independent directors are being questioned now has uh, is unprecedented, I would say. And uh, speaking of Yes Bank, which was a market darling and probably would have fit within a quality lens, is there a is that a company that you held at some time? Uh, yes Bank. Yeah. Never. It did, okay. it never came in our universe, and and not just because now they are down. <laughs> I am talking, but. See, generally, uh, when you talk to the industry participant, the bankers, 
uh, we always uh, got a very uh, uh, different views in terms of how they are running the business. And obviously, they did very well for 10 years. Uh, the stock price almost uh, gave 10x returns, uh, but it just took out those returns in one year. Uh, but we never got that comfort on the management, the way they were doing business on ground. And uh, luckily for us, it never formed the part of the universe uh, uh, as, as, a, as an investment proposition. So, so when you talk to some of the, uh, I would say, sane bankers, uh, you can find out what they are up to. And if you, if you know what they are up to and still you want to participate for a short term, uh, then I, I would say you are not just doing justice to your philosophy. Thanks very much, Dinesh. Uh, really appreciate your time, and I'm sure all the participants across Australia and New Zealand, uh, you know, were, have enjoyed uh, hearing you speak. Uh, uh, I really appreciate your time, and look forward to chatting again at some point in the future. Thank you, thank you, Mukundan. Thank you, guys. All the best. Stay safe. Thank you.